Hi, right, so welcome back to the session for today. So today we want to take into account some other topics in relation to business mathematics. And today we want to focus on break even analysis. So today is your first time. Do want to share the video, like it as well, so that others will get the benefit to always to join us in that particular case. So it's going to be an engaging one. Any question you have for us, you just have to put in the comment section or drop in the live chat section so that We'll bring you up and answer it for you so that you're able to understand how the course go when it comes to business mathematics generally so let me bring up my board so that we get going generally from that end there all right so welcome back once again so today you're going to focus on what break even analysis as a way to explain concepts in relation to business so let me title my topic here so that we get going in that particular case okay so let me have okay. think here we'll do okay so we are going to look at break even analysis break even analysis in our discussion for today so what we're going to discuss today is going to be a break even analysis in a single product then later we'll look at what break even analysis in multiple form generally so you want to make sure that you stay connected as we move along okay so let's flow so you and I know that when it comes to businesses, businesses are always making decisions as to how they can make profit, as to how, which quantity you want to produce to achieve certain minimum cost and which quantity as well you also want to produce to get revenue. So if that is a decision that is always happening within the business, the goal of every business is to make profit but at the back side of the making profit it also has it goes off in terms of what cost in terms of why you must sell out to actually make revenue right so if these are the decisions of the business then that will be a nice decision going forward but what must we do as we've been uh feature managers that we are going through the course of business administration and most importantly this concept to help you to make better decisions so far as your dealings in making business decision with respect to profit with respect to output are much concerned that is why we want to focus today on our discussion okay so haven't we gotten that then we can say that chip cup something here okay so having we gotten that, then we can say that in such a case, break even will help us to have that fair idea of what we desire to achieve in making decisions. So when it comes to break even analysis, the goal here is that, hey, we want to produce certain outputs that will, at the end of the day, it will help us to achieve what minimum cost, right? So that once we incur the cost, we neither will incur a loss neither even a profit too so the concept of break even analysis has to do with where a business determine some level of output they want to produce in order to break even so at that point it that they neither make a profit or a loss so what does that mean so that means that per the discussion that we are throwing up here we can say that at the point of what break even we are interested in what two items here the two items are what our total cost follow carefully our total cost or let me use initials for you okay so our total cost must be equal to what our total what revenue that is a concept of break-even analysis this is a foundation and it's a principle that you need to what, understand that when it comes to break-even analysis our total cost must be equal to what our total revenue since the business desire to produce certain output that at the end of the day they will neither make a loss or make what a profit okay so once you're able to establish this let us expand it further to uh get what actually what total cost is what total revenue is so total cost can also be measured as what 
Total cost can also be measured as our total what variable cost plus what total fixed cost. Follow carefully, total fixed cost. So we have total variable cost plus total fixed cost. Total variable cost plus total fixed cost. What are variable costs? When we talk about variable costs in this equation, we mean what? All costs that will change with the level of output or the unit that we produce. Let me give you a typical scenario generally there. Let's say we have a school that we operate. Follow carefully. If let's say the school that we operate, we operate with let's say 100 students in that particular shoe, 100 students. 100 students in that particular school. Follow carefully. If we incur a cost of what for these students, let's say the cost of these students in maintaining them, teaching them, giving them the mentorship that will require for them to become a successful student in future or a successful person in future, let's say the cost we incur in maintaining them, I mean, those kind of activities that we do, is like say, like say the cost we incur generally. Let's say we incur a cost of, uh, we incur a cost of, let's say hopefully, uh, thousand dollars that is our school we operate in dollars okay so we incur a cost of thousand dollars that is fine so are you going to tell me that one we also have a number of students like uh let's say now our school has expanded and then we have gotten more students now we are having what almost about 130 students on a row are you going to still incur the same hundred dollars that we we're going to we incur for what 100 students it's a question I'm throwing to you. Are we going to incur the same cost? I mean, in terms of variable cost, as we incur for the 100 students? It's certainly what? No. So it's possible that we may incur something what? Less. We may incur something less than what we incur for the 100, or we may incur something more than what we incur for uh, the 100 students. So the concept I'm trying to build up here when it comes to variable cost, variable cost changes as the output changes as the output changes so in reference to tangible product variable costs will always change with respect to the number of output the business would intend to produce oh come on what is this sorry about that oh is it possible come in Okay, yeah, let's flow. So sorry about that. Let's flow. So that is the idea when it comes to what break even analysis generally there. Okay, that is the idea here. So now if that is what we are natural as I was saying, the total variable cost, the amount of money that we will care for hundred students in maintain them wouldn't be the same thing as one thing. So it's going to what change. So total variable cost or variable cost changes as the level of output what changes. So that is the goal when it comes to what variable cost or total variable. And what are the elements of total variable cost? These are the elements of total variable cost. So elements of variable cost. Elements of variable cost. So 
oh what is this elements of variable cost so I like say elements of variable cost variable cost so elements of variable cost we have we have one direct word material or like say straight up material cost material cost then we have what labor cost we have expenses expenses in that so these are the elements of what variable cost we have what material we have labor and we have it. so this is when put together and even the cost of the entrepreneur for running the business one at the end of the day he's the one running the business he's not supposed to pay him or herself so that one's also part of what the element of variable cost but as i said variable cost will change as the output changes and the example that we gave you you can clearly see the effect with respect to variable cost and that of face cost to you is also a cost which remain is the opposite of variable cost is a cost which remain irrespective of the level of what output it's a cost which remain irrespective of the level of what output that is a variable cost for instance we can have an issue like let's say within our same business or school that we are having now uh teachers are on strike possibly because their demand are not being met right and at the end of the day you don't come to cheat the student so if teachers are on strike that means that hey we don't have any students here and that possibly mean that output is what zero output is what zero so if output is zero that doesn't actually necessitate avoid all costs no remember the school we have what security personnel that take charge of the school we have other people also does some activities more like administrative activities for the school like uh those in administrative offices i mean for them for them they will still come to put in some things together so that we resolve everything their cost is part of what we call the face word cost or for instance the lessons that we pay the electricity that we pay the light that we use in the organization the fact that teachers are on strike and students are not being taught does not mean that we are going to turn off all our lights or our power system that we use in the school no so such cost becomes what face cost there are those costs which cannot be avoided irrespective of whether the output is zero or is a different ball game altogether so that is the issue about face cost cost which does not change with the level of output or so so that is the issue about total cost total variable cost plus total face cost okay so once you have gotten that then we can then switch our attention back to what the revenue for that is the concept that we are building up here that our total cost is supposed to be equal to what our total what revenue so I like to see, let me bring it up here so we continue with that case. Any question from you throw in the chat? So we move on. Okay. So now we know that our total cost is a combination of what? Uh, total variable cost plus what? Total what? Face cost. And what about total? So total revenue is also has to do with what? The output that we produce as an organization. And per what will be the market price look out for the product we are producing and the market information with respect to their price attached to it that will give us the total what revenue so total revenue so the same thing as what quantity produced okay quantity produced multiplied by what the selling price per quantity or per what the unit that we are producing okay so this is how we also how we measure what total what revenue so total revenue represent the total sales volume in terms of their value i mean monetary value that we will get at the end of what the day when you put the product into what sale so that is a concept of total revenue and we are saying that in break-even analysis as per the decision of the organization we want to produce certain output that will at the end of the day equalize our total cost and equalize our total revenue that means our total cost and total revenue are going to be what the same and at that point we said that if that is the case our total cost will be equal to what our total revenue and it's also going to be called to what profit 
also equal to loss and that should be equal to what zero so our profit is zero our loss also what zero at that point we break what even so that is a concept you want to understand when it comes to what break even so this is also one uh key assumption when it comes to break even analysis that in break even analysis one assumption here is that we neither make a profit or a loss so that will lead us to some assumption that we make because actually decisions are born to i mean inculcate or included in the decision some level of assumption so we need to understand some i mean some fair idea about how the assumptions actually plays in when it comes to decision making so some few of them we're going to look at them we jump straight to the formula issue and then know how we can calculate break uh even point for revenue break even point i said break even point for revenue break even point in terms of what uh quantity and in terms of what volume in that particular case that we need to understand so let's jump with some assumptions that we want to undertake generally here so assumptions assumptions underlying break even analysis underlying what break even let me shorten it for you here break even what analysis now follow carefully break even analysis assumptions so as i said one assumption here is that one our profit we neither make a profit or loss so we neither as a business so i'm just using that to we neither make a profit or a loss so that's one of the key assumptions two is that when it comes to the fixed cost as per the definition that we have here in break-even analysis fixed cost total fixed cost is fixed but fixed cost per unit what varies let's chip in this so we are saying that total fixed cost total fixed cost is fixed but per unit what variable cost but per unit but per unit variable cost i said per unit variable cost per unit face cost sorry per unit face cost varies so that is also an aspect of what break even so per definition we had in africa we said total face costs are cost that remains constant irrespective of the level of what output right that's what we said so in that line we can make an assumption that hey then our total cost supposed to be faced but the any variable cost supposed to be what varies and we look at some of these things as we move along with the discussion and then also one also key thing with respect to the output also has to do with the volume that we produce or the output that we produce at the point of break-even analysis and with respect to the assumptions our total output with respect to production so total production let me use this for you to make a clear date differences total total output i mean respect production production or say quantity you guys use production total production in terms of output should be equal to what is equal to is equal to is equal to is equal to what sales what volume is equal to sales volume there is equal to sales what volume that means that whatever we produce already they will sell all of them that is also another assumption and the line break even and these are the things that will necessitate for a business or managers or management to make decisions as to how at what level should we produce to make I mean beyond that we should make a profit or at what point of production that we neither make a profit or loss and we'll look at the graphical method approach very soon as we discuss and that will open our I mean I more on, or I mean that will open our understanding more on a certain point where we can produce to make a profit and our point are we producing to make neither a profit or what a loss we'll look at some of these issues as we uh 
wrap up with uh, the discussion all right so that is the issue that we need to understand okay so once you have gotten that idea we have a lot of assumptions there but i don't want to bore you with a lot but you can read a lot we, we can even have a what we call the selling price the selling price is fixed generally when it can't break you know, this, i mean the selling price per unit is fixed but the total sales for all the outputs varies these are some of the assumptions that you want to look at i mean you can read some of these things in other uh, jurisdictions that you want to but that is not the focus of so much here so once you have gotten the assumptions the next thing you want to look at is looking at what the graphical representation of how break even naturally what works so that from there we can build in our formulas taking some questions and then goes into the multiple product issue then we are off generally here okay so any question for me so that will take in the next thing that we want to look at okay i see some chart here let's see what we have here then we flow and then we go oh okay let's see i'm coming let me check up this and then let's go what is this Okay. So let's see what we have here. I think we have some chart here. Patrick is saying that shalom okay oh, shalom to you then we have we again the same person i'm enjoying your i'm enjoying this class from kumasi okay thank you for joining us thank you so much for being present then on facebook i think we have one here let's see isn't that uh please will the video be saved here I wasn't here from the beginning of today's selection, so I'm confused. We just started, generally, we just started, so it will also be saved on uh, Facebook after everything. You get it to watch it again. But it's better you, I mean, follow the live discussion so that you have any question, you can throw in a chat for us. So that is on Facebook. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, Kelvin, it's also saying that watching you live from Kenya's campus. Okay, that is great. Thank you for joining us today on this section and then i saying that i'm enjoying your lecture okay thank you so much for that thank you so much for that so let's let's continue the discussion thank you that is all for today okay so let's trip in and then let's go What is this? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. So, so that is the idea that we want you to understand. So now let's chip into looking at uh, the issues about the graphical method, and that will expose us with lots of what uh, principles that we will need going forward. So under the break-even analysis, we have what we call two approach in terms of graphical representation. We have the traditional approach, which takes into account all the issues that we have discussed this into account the revenue this to account what the cost variable and fixed in that particular case and even the output but the other approach we call it the contribution approach that one also looks into account the relationship between what that of what the variable cost and that of what revenue but fixed cost wouldn't be actually like care of fiscal cost wouldn't be indicated but we'll look at some of these issues as we move along in that particular case so let dive into take into the graphical representation the traditional approach so traditional approach well, let me put it like this for you graphical representation 
of break even analysis of break even analysis okay so another graphical represent this is what we're going to do you're going to have a graph somewhat like this let's see you have as usual you know for every graph we have what the y axis and then we have the x axis that's what we're going to look at here too it doesn't change generally there and we have for the x also somewhere dancing like this okay so at these curves the vertical curve as you know in general mathematics as what the y axis here in breaking we will call it as what the cost or the revenue or curve cost we call it as what cost or revenue curve so total cost or total revenue or curve we indicate that on the vertical line and then the horizontal one how we call the output curve that lays out the output that we produce or the units of produce that we make at the end of the day so that is the curve for that okay that is the first thing that we need to know so now we know that the vertical line represents what the output okay the vertical line represents sorry the cost or the revenue and then the horizontal line represents what the output or the unit that we produce generally okay so once you have gotten that that is fine how then do we also identify on this break even graph our fixed cost our total cost though we know that these are total costs with respect to the i mean the values they're going to get but we also want to have a line that represents a total fixed cost then a line for total revenue right and as well in between the total uh cost and the fixed cost we get what we call a variable cost you know there that we look at so we call this point this point here here we call this point here at the point of what origin we have indicated here we call it as a point of what origin let me see if I can expand it okay we call this point at the point of what origin so the point of we will come back to that version in determining the face cost curve on the break even analysis graph face cost curve is a curve that makes an angle of 90 degrees from the cost or revenue or curve face cost curve is a curve or a line that starts from the cost or revenue curve and makes an angle of 90 degrees so we can have our face cost curve like this we can have our face cost curve like this just fully carefully something like this yeah something like this so we can clearly see that here we can determine what the angle involved to what 90 here when you measure you're going to get what 90 something like that but that's not we are not here to determine angles but that is the idea behind so face cost curve is a line that is also parallel to what the output line you can clearly see that this this line that you see here is parallel toward the face cost line right so we expect that face cost curve should be parallel toward the output curve so let's take note of that let me throw in this away oh sorry about that okay so that is a face cost curve so we call this as what well, a face cost curve the face cost curve or total face cost curve generally you know, there so once we get that the next line we want to look at is also what we call our total word cost curve total cost curve is a curve that starts from the point where the face cost make an angle of 90 degrees with a cost or revenue word curve so it is at this point it is at this point where we get word our total cost word curve so here we will have what our total cost being starting from where where the at the point where the face cost is tangential toward the cost or revenue or curve so we have this coming in this particular space or let me read, bring it down a bit for you something like this okay so this also becomes what or will give us our total 
cost our total what? cost our total cost it start at the point where the first cost is tangential toward the cost of revenue curve and if you remember i said something about the point of origin that is at the point where the cost of revenue curve and the output would meet so at the point of origin that's where we have also our total revenue so total revenue is also indicated as a starting point from the point of origin here okay which is what so it start from the point of origin and it cut across what both face cost and total cost so this is going to give us also our total what revenue okay now we have gotten the curves smoothing down here that is fine now we said under break even we want to produce some level of output okay that we will neither make a profit or we neither make all the loss so that means that at a point where the total revenue meet or cut across the total cost determines our break even point determines our break even point determines our break even point that the point where total revenue meets the total cost determines our break even point so when i have our break even point dancing here let me try to bring in a different color for you okay something like this so half what our break even points dancing here you see that the point where they meet so we'll have here as what the break even point so here's going to be called the break even point the break even point point b e p break even point now this wouldn't help you when you use green break even point so now once we know the break even point how do you also identify the break even point in terms of units and in terms of value also that's also another key issue that we also need to note to identify the break even point in unit we said that the horizontal line of the graph represent the output and you can see the output curve here right we can see the output curve word here that is what we are trying to explain so for us to identify our break-even point in units, all I want to do is to start from where we get our break-even point, where total revenue was meeting the total cost. Then we trace it downwards. We trace it what downwards. We trace it downwards. We trace it downwards like this. So where it meets our output curve at that point, we call that point as what our. Oh, sorry about this. I just want to have some space. Supposed not to be too big. So at the point where we trace from the break-even point to touch the output curve, we'll determine what our break-even point in output or unit. Our break-even point what in unit. This is how we identify break-even point in unit. And then when we also trace it to the cost or revenue what line, then we also get what our break-even point in value or in sale. So we also do that generally there. Let's see what we have here. Which is going to be straightened. Yeah. So something like this we will have here. Let me then tell it for you. So here we have something like this, then something like this also here. So here also going to give us what our break even point. Our break even point in terms of what value. In terms of what value or what sale this is also how we identify what break even point so now we know what is a break even point in unit what is a break even point in value oh, that is established so we said that break even point in unit is a unit where we trace from the break even point to the output word curve or line and break even point in value with respect to graph that we are trying to understand here is where we trace from the break even point where the revenue and the cost meet to the cost or revenue line that will give us our break even point in value generally there okay so once you have gotten that that is perfect that is good but we are not done there are other things that we need to explore when it comes to the issue of break even analysis the issue are also about okay that is fine 
what if when we produce above the break-even point or we produce below the break-even point what are the the idea or the interpretation behind producing beyond the break-even point and producing below the break-even point notwithstanding we'll get back into that variation or variation so we just have to stay connected here at this point too let me bring this up here at this point or at this angle where an angle is formed in between the with respect to the break-even point in between the total revenue and then the total cost you, you, you can see that we are identifying two angles generally here we can see that we are identifying two angles naturally here below the break-even point we call that area as what well, the lost area we call the area as what the lost area loss means at that point we are making what a loss lost area but beyond the break-even point then you will get what a profit so at this angle we call it what a profit we call this what a profit profit what area so the angle below the break-even point is called the loss area and the angle beyond the break-even point is called what the profit what area so now we know what is a break-even point in unit what is a breaking point in value what is a break-even point we know what is a loss area we know what is what a profit area good then once we are done you remember in our discussion throughout in the course you have made an emphasis that every business are there to make a profit they are not there for any loss so we always always want to take the positive side though we have other i mean issues or situation that can lead a business to make a loss but as always, as a positive-minded business, you want to strive to make what a profit. So what if I don't they will produce beyond the break-even point where we are going to make a profit? What is the name given to the extra unit that we produce? So it also means that beyond the break-even point in unit, we are getting excess, right? We can trace it from here. Beyond that, we are getting these excesses coming to town. We are getting these excesses right that i'm indicating that is out likewise also you're also getting excesses in value here also going up so any gene that we produce beyond the break-even point at that point we call that point as well or we call those units and from that uh break-even point onward or upwards we call those what area of gene that we produce as what well, margin of safety with respect to unit so we are saying it's margin of safety with respect to unit because it is the unit that we will produce to make what a profit beyond the break-even point that will make what a profit it is called margin of safety in terms of unit where we are re making reference reference to the output curve or line any unit beyond the break-even point is called margin of safety very fundamental and very important you, you need to know and any value that we will get or any cost that we will incur in producing beyond the break even point we will get what our margin of safety in terms of value it can be a cost it can be what a revenue generation because i don't know the one we produce we are making what uh sales i don't at the same time we're also incurring what a cost or we can see that relation yes so Beyond the break-even point in unit, we get our margin of safety. So here we call it MOS. Most of the time, I prefer to call it by that. So we have here as what uh, margin of safety MOX in unit. Okay, and the whole of here is what we call margin of safety in terms of what value. Remember, at any unit that you produce, you incur a cost. At the same time, you get what after putting to sale, you get what some sales value. So that is the issue that is happening here. So anything produced beyond the break-even point in units, it is called margin of safety in terms of units. And anything produced beyond, as a produce, anything we get as a cost we incur or revenue that we obtain beyond the break-even point in value, we get what margin of safety in terms of value. These are the key basic issues that we need to understand when it comes to what break-even point. When it comes to break-even point, generally there. So let's take note of that. Any question you want to throw in a chat for me?
so that it will answer it up for you. So that is the issue about what the graphical representation of break-even analysis that we need to understand generally here. So let's take note of that. Okay, so once you have gotten that, then R from these are graph, we can then produce what R formulas generally. And we can even start from the margin of safety. You can clearly see that the margin of safety is a unit from the point of origin here toward any excess or any, to, I mean, to the point of unit that we produce that is above what the break even point in units. Let me take it again. That the margin of safety is a unit production from zero to that particular number. So it is beyond the break even point in unit. So for us to determine our margin of safety, what do we do? It's pretty very simple. All I'm going to do is to compare what our break even point in unit with the sales word unit. With the sales unit. Because if you remember, we said we made an assumption here that when it comes to break even analysis, our total output with respect to production, with respect to what production, sorry about this, I thought. With respect to production, is equal to what sales volume. That is whatever we produce is being sold what out. So that is the principle we are trying to use here. That for us to compute for a uh, margin of safety in terms of units, we are going to compare the total production that we produce at the end of the day compared with the break-even points in units, and we get our margin of safety. So shall the values are going to be. Value two, we look at the cost we incur up to date for the business, right? That's going to the total cost. And then we can also compare the cost of what? I mean, the break-even point in terms of value. If it's a cost, we compare that to the cost we are incurring up to date. Compare the two, then we get what our margin of safety in terms of value. If it's a revenue too, for sure, revenue. So that is the issue here. So now we can even start diving in our formulas so that we are good to what? go. All right, so that is the issue that we need to understand generally here. Okay, so now let's chip in some examples. As an example, the formulas, so that from this guy, we can chip in the formulas so that we can then start some questions there and then we'll move on in general there. So let's talk about some formulas based on the graph here. So from the graph above, we can compute some of these formulas down. So formless and a break-even analysis, or let's say formless or formless come kind of right. Some will call it formally, represent the pro or formless. We are good to go. So that will mean that we can easily establish what our break-even point with the I mean I say it's break-even point, the margin of safety. I think I'll talk about it, but you let's take them in that systematic sequential that's what I will chip in this. Let's begin with the total cost and total revenue issue to bring in the break-even point and then uh, revenue. So now we said at the beginning of our discussion that when it comes to break-even analysis, we neither make a profit or loss. So at that point, our total word cost should be equal to our total word revenue. Total cost equal to our total word revenue. Okay, so if that is the case, now we also expanded this definition to mean that our total cost is a combination of what total what the combination of what total what variable cost plus total face cost right and that is equal to the total revenue expanded that we said that is also what the quantity that we produce so let me represent say x for the quantity that we produce right as an output multiplying the selling price per what unit that's the selling price per the x that we produce so the selling price per what unit or the x that we produce generally here. so this is what we said at the beginning part okay now let's go a bit further to break it down so that you understand what, I, what we are trying to say here if you remember i'm just taking you back to the assumption again this is going to be useful here that we said that total output put in terms of production is equal to our sales volume so that means that when we produce any output, we incur a cost, and the costs are all segregated into two: face cost, variable cost. But as I said, it is a variable cost that will change with respect to the output. It's a variable that is a variable cost that will change with respect to the output. Okay. If that is the case, then 
we can compete for our total variable cost. But we said that our first cost, whether we produce or we don't produce, is still going to remain the same generally there. Okay, so now that means that for our total variable cost, we can say our total variable cost should be called the output that we produce, which in this case is what x. So we bring in the x here that we produce, and then multiply by what, and then multiply this by, or let me bring in this, and then multiply this by what the variable cost per what unit. In a question form, you'll be given the variable cost per, but if you are not given, you must still find a way to compute and we'll do some of these things as we move along. So x being the output multiplied by the variable cost per unit. So that one to a half what my variable cost per unit that is per what x. Okay, so that means that with the total variable cost, you can also expand it as what x multiplying. I've, I've used x as to represent our output. So let's get that. Multiplying with the variable cost per unit plus the first cost. Okay, and that should be called to what our x of what selling price per what unit. All right, let me bring it that going for up, take them off. So now writing a more simpler way, we can say that we have what VC of X plus what FC, and that should be called to what X into bracket selling price per what unit. Now we want to make as a subject being the output. We want to make as a subject. How do we go? So we just want to make as a subject. So we want to actually bring in or make X a subject. So we want to bring in the variable cost to join that of what the selling price and its output generally there. So we we'll have what first cost, follow carefully, first cost to be equal to. So we have what our X multiplying the selling price. Then realize that here is positive, right? The variable cost multiplying the X, that is the total variable cost is positive. So when you join the total revenue, it becomes what negative. So negative word X into bracket, we have here as word our VC. Follow carefully. So now we want to factor S out. So what is happening here? We have what our X multiplying what selling price per unit minus variable cost per what unit. So what do we do? Now I want to make as a subject. So we divide both sides by what? Divide both sides by the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per what unit. Okay, so therefore we can say that our first cost over our first cost over our selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit should be called to x and it's at this point that we established what we call our break even point in unit this is how we determine break even point in unit this is how we determine break even point in unit okay so once you have gotten the break even point in unit for us to get the value, so that is formula one. So here, in the exam situation, you don't go to derive this formula. No, just go by the formula that the final output I've gotten here. Break-even point in units go to what first cost over selling price per unit minus what variable cost per unit. That is the issue that you want to understand. So that is our first formula. The second one, two is the value because once you have you're supposed to have what value so what is then break even point in value so we have what our bep in value so value is very simple just multiply it by what just multiply it what the selling price because we are looking out for value right so just have to what multiply the break even point in unit by the selling price per unit and you are good to go that is all so here it is what our break even point in unit right that is from from la one that is from la one multiplying what the selling price per what unit and always the selling price is going to be given if it's not given yes you must find a way to compete for that but for the most part you're always going to be given so that you can use it for your calculation so this is also how we calculate what the break-even point in value so you know that the in units is what first cost over selling price minus the variable cost per unit or in per unit and then for you to get a value selling price per unit multiplied by the break even point in unit okay so once you have gotten that that is perfect 
from that we can also build up from with respect to our margin of safety and then uh in terms of unit and in terms of value and we add some few other formulas and then we are off then we look out for the multiple one then we are good to go okay so let's go to formula three so formula three we are also looking at we're also looking at margin of safety so margin of safety in terms of what unit we said it is the unit beyond the break-even point that will fetch us what the margin of safety in terms of, so by margin of safety in terms of unit we are taking into account our sales or our production in units sales in unit or production in unit compared with that of what our break-even point in unit any excess of that would then give us what a margin of safety in unit and to get that for value two as always you must buy by the selling price and you are good to go so for we'll say that we'll say that margin of safety in terms of value should be equal to the margin of safety in terms of unit so that means that margin of safety in terms of value depends on margin of safety in terms of unit once you get a unit wrong that means your value you will be cooked so you make sure you get it right so multiply here by word the selling price per unit and you are good to go so that is some of the uh formulas that we can compute as well but notwithstanding we have left with i think two other formulas that we will look at there are times where sorry there are times where the business want to make some target hey for this year you want to hit it up to tell our competitors that hey we are there we are the giants in the industry so that we can catch up a large market share what do they do that means that they want to make a decision they want to target certain level that they want to produce to get certain level of what output that is beyond the break-even point so while there is such goal then we will have what we call target unit targeted unit in terms of i mean targeted profit we get profit. I mean, when we make a target we are intend to make a profit so targeted profit in terms of unit and targeted profit in terms of what value right and all these target then have i mean an inbuilt value or inbuilt system in that of what the margin of safety because anything that is beyond the break-even point will chip in these issues that we are discussing so target targeted profit in terms of unit and terms of value have it is you in the anything beyond the break-even points let me put in that way for you to understand generally there so that is the idea that we want you bring up here that you really want to understand okay so if that is the case let's let's continue bringing this one so that means you're going to have what another section chipping into account our target profit in terms of unit and in value and we look at one last thing we also talk about contribution issue and then we are done with the single analysis then we touch on the multiple first and we are good to go we'll take an example very soon so let's five let me add this as five so we also have what our target profit let me use the initials for you okay target profit in terms of what or targeted profit in terms of unit so that's also pretty very simple which how many units or what should be the output that we should produce to make a profit that is the targeted profit in unit the question is how many units should we produce to make what a profit that is a targeted profit so when it comes to targeted profit in unit the only thing you're going to do is add what the profit you know the breaking point in terms of unit right you know that it's very simple so all that i want to do is to add a target profit to the first cost divide by the selling price minus the variable cost per unit that is all that will give you your target profit in terms of so once you know the break-even point in unit just add the profit and you're always going to be giving the profit in the question just add the profit to the fixed cost divide by what your selling price minus variable cost and you are good to go so here we have what so that we have what our first cost plus what first cost plus what target profit divided by what 
selling price minus the variable cost or per unit. And that will give us our target profit in terms of what unit. Then in value, what do you do? As always, as always. So you can be given in terms of value or in, I mean in sale. If you don't see value, same thing as sale. So when you see that, don't be contemplating on that. Just know that they are the same. Target the profit in terms of value or target in terms of sale. We are we just mean what the same value thing here. So what do we do? So here too, what I want to just multiply by the selling price. So you have what your target profit in terms of unit multiplied by what your selling price per unit. And you are done. Very simple, straightforward to the point. And one last thing you want to look at with respect to the formula is the issue about what we have been dealing with. You see that with the break-even point in terms of units, we established that it is what? Selling price minus variable cost. In business decisions and respect to break-even analysis, at the same time, we get excess of our selling price above our variable cost. We get what we call what, or we derive what we call contribution. Let me take it again. That at any point where we make excess of our selling price against our variable cost, we get what we call what a contribution. In some jurisdictions, they will call it as a profit, but here we call it as what contribution. Why? Because it's waiting for what it is waiting for what uh first cost to be deducted so that we can then get what our profit. That's why we don't call it profit at the beginning stage, but we call it what contribution. Why? Because it is awaited for what I mean, first cost to be taken off so that whatever we get, you get whether a net profit or a net what loss. That is the goal when it comes to the issue about contribution. So contribution also means that we have already been dealing with that. Contribution may have contribution per unit or contribution, total contribution. So contribution per unit is equal to the selling price per unit okay is equal to the selling price is equal to the selling price per unit compared with what our variable cost per what unit compared with our variable cost per unit that is contribution in terms of unit then in terms of value to you know what to do right hey, sorry i said contribution per unit yeah yeah i think i'm right yeah I thought I was thinking another way. See, when we are teaching, a lot of things wrap up in our mind. So that is contribution per unit, selling price per unit, my variable cost per unit. But if you are looking at the total contribution, total contribution, total contribution, if you are looking at the total contribution, then we are focusing on the total word. We are focusing on the total word value of sales, or you are looking at the sales value in terms of the total sales value okay minus what our total variable cost total so you're looking at let me put it in that way variable cost i didn't want to write but let me write all right so we are looking at sales value minus what variable cost. that means the total variable cost compared with the total what sales value that will give us a total contribution but if you want to know i mean with these uh nominal figures we didn't actually have the effects of how much contribution you are making but to analyze how much contribution the business is making from eight activities in most cases we want to analyze it from the perspective of percentages so that we can see the true effects of the contribution so that would mean that we need to find what the contribution to sales what ratio in terms of percentage so that we know that okay this is the percentage of contribution that we are making as an organization so that means that we're going to also bring in the issue about what contribution to sales ratio and literally it's the same thing that we are discussing generally here but just i want to find the percentage of our contribution so to do that too we call it cs ratio cs ratio is the same thing as what our contribution so it can be contribution follow carefully it can be what 
contribution per unit divided by what our selling price per unit our selling price per unit and then multiply by what 100 i'm not saying 100 i said 100 so don't be cooked to write 100 percent by the time you realize you're multiplying by a different thing altogether okay so contribution sales ratio is what contribution per unit divided by selling price per unit if you're also looking at it from their total contribution is the total contribution divided by the total sales value multiplied by 100 so anywhere you go it's going to get the same thing so this will actually help us to know the actual marginal effect of the contribution we are making as an organization with respect to the output and the cost we are incurring generally so contribution is equal to our sales value compared with our variable cost at the end of the day and that will establish what our contribution and as i said it's waiting for face cost to be adjusted to it so that then we day we get our profit or what a loss so that is the idea that we want to build when it comes to contribution but one thing i also want to chip in is how most of the time these questions are thrown it's best you, for you to know this so that once you guide yourself with the principle when the questions are thrown you know what to do okay so what is it that i'm trying to actually bring to your attention here is the issue about the periods with respect to production and respect to whatever issue you want to do okay so nb there are times where the examiner will turn a question like this that okay aa limited produce and sell a uh, jam for a particular period for a year the first cost is say forty thousand the selling price per unit is let's say 12 and let's say the variable cost per unit is let's say uh eight then the question goes on to tell you that however he intended to make future profit so he made a target profit that he intend to achieve we say uh twenty thousand there one from the above information calculate i or one break even point in terms of unit or calculate the break even no not necessarily calculate the break even, calculate what the monthly break even point yeah calculate the monthly break even point in units how do you go by this it is one of the ways that examiners we use to toast to them so that we see whether you have gotten the principle or not if you are not getting that then you will be toasted generally there so that is the idea so if we are asked to find a break even point in terms of what unit with respect to man, monthly break even point in terms of unit how do you go all i want to do is that if you check the uh, question and realize that the first cost was given per annum that is for a year all i want to do for you to get your monthly first cost you take what the total first cost for the year divided by 12 and that will give you your monthly what first cost so once you get a monthly first cost then you are good to go because for the selling price and then the real cost per unit doesn't have an issue with the period it's only the first cost that most of the time the emphasis is being placed on so you just have to divide the first cost by 12 and you are good to go if it is for a quarterly break even you know that you have for four quarters in a year so you divide break even i said the break even you divide the first cost by four and you get the quarter face cost if it is daily to then you know 365 days divide if it's in a week's 52 weeks you just divide okay but the office is also very true where you have been given what the monthly or quarterly or daily break even and they're asking you to find what the per annum break even that one what do you do you multiply so if we are giving let's say a monthly break even a monthly first cost what am i even saying break even break even a monthly first cost to be like say two thousand and you're asked to find what the break even point per annum that means you're going to multiply two thousand by twelve so that you can use that in your calculation then you are good to go this is what i want to draw your attention on and it cut across every session you can also be given a targeted profit in a monthly basis and they ask you to calculate targeted profit in terms of unit in per annum base that means what do you do you multiply the target profit by 12. it can be month quarter weeks day so whatever it comes you must know how to tackle it and then deal with it that is what i want you to note here so i am not writing anything
that you need to understand okay so that's also another thing that i want you to understand when it comes to what break even and once you guide yourself with these principles i bet you you're supposed to go to the exam hall but there's a question on it you're supposed to hit it left and right and you are good to what girl so let's take note of that any question just want to throw in the chat for me so we take it from there take it from there take it from there take it from there okay so that is that i see some chart here like this well that we take our question on this from less and then crop some 20 minutes to tack on the multiple break even and then we are done for today okay so let me bring in some chart here so that we'll see what they have for us i respect to that uh okay let's see what we have here oh okay let's see what we have here okay okay chip in this Idusu is saying that is it Idusu Musak? Yeah, he's saying that. <clears throat> please, can you help me with the difference differences be, with difference between I think between face total face cost and per unit face cost. Oh, so the total face cost is the cost that will be given. I mean the actual cost that will be given. So let's say if you are given what to face cost as say thousand dollars that is your face cost okay but for you to find your per unit face cost that's face cost per unit the name will even tell you that it is what your face cost divided by the total unit that we produce so when you divide your total face cost by the unit that we produce that will give you your per unit what face cost in that particular case so let's take note of that and then uh we have we're here patrick is saying that please what is it place of overheads in in variable cost yeah that's why i said that when it comes to variable cost we are interested in what is it we are interested in material labor and then expense i didn't say direct so that means that in between material in between oh sorry i thought i'm showing my board to you oh let me show you that so that will bring in the, this So when we're discussing the elements of variable, I said that we have material cost, labor and expense, right? So that's in between what the material cost, we have direct material, indirect material cost. The indirect parts are the, what we call the variable ones, sorry, the overheads ones, right? Likewise, labor, the indirect labor, we get the overheads ones, the expenses, the indirect, we get the overheads there. So let's take note of that. So that is the place where we have the overheads coming in the variable cost all right so that is the issue there in that particular case so i think i'm resorted more my chart here okay so that is that that is that so let's take note of that so let's bring in some questions to wrap up wrap up with uh what we are having generally here so let's bring in some questions and then let's see how we can flow generally there. I think I got some question back. Give me a sec, let me check up this. Check up this so that I'll bring in the question I'm coming. Uh -oh.
Okay, so let's use this question as a way to explain the principle that we just uh learned now here. Oh, oh, oh. Trying to so that you can zoom it and get it right. Okay, so uh, let's flow. It will tell us that a young seller in Kumasi make her annual face cost of what? So we are seeing what annual face cost here. Annual face cost. Oh. Annual face cost of what? 48,000 Ghana cities. Okay, to deal with. She sells jams. Let's see. I want to expand this so I can see what is happening here. Expand this. Okay. To deal with, she sells her yam for an average price of 10 Ghana cities per tuba, and her variable cost is what? 4.25 Ghana cities. So you are asked to use this question to answer question 11 and then up to question 13. It's saying that how many tubers of yam, how many tubers of yam must this trader sell in a month to break even? So you see what I was talking about in a month. So if you don't think uh, you'll be toasted just pick in values and then once you see break even now uh, no just relax and then look out for the context of the question so that it will guide you so straight up we can say that break even point break even point in respect to demand for the tuba now we know the unit is what tuba so we should have we say that our bep our bep in monthly basis Let me say unit first with respect to man should be equal to what our face cost because face cost was given us what per annum face so we divide face cost by 12 and then divide all by what the selling price per unit okay minus the variable cost per what unit so that you know what you are doing so what is our face cost per unit it was what 40 so 48 thousand divided by what, 12 okay divided by 12 and then divide all by what the selling price which we know to be what 10 and then the cost is what 4.25 so 10 minus 4.25 so what do we get straight up so let me bring in my calculator here let's see what we'll get so we have what we have uh, what is this? We have forty-eight thousand. Let me do this. We have forty-eight thousand. This was an MCQ type, so we just have to work everything straight without wasting so much time here. So forty-eight thousand divided by twelve, then all divided by what? So we have we have what ten minus four point two five. And what are we getting? So we are getting what six nine five. So you are getting what six you are getting six nine five but you realize that a tuba of yam cannot have what half of it is supposed to be a full yam so we will have what six nine so we realize that after the decimal point we have six which is what greater than what 0 0.5 so we can use that in equivalent to run it what to the nearest what, hole so that becomes what six nine what, six tubers of yam to best of yam there so that will give us the answer then you are good to go i mean it was an object so i cleaned the objective as well that we can work it to see that you are actually true with that so that is how you get it monthly so you divide it by 12 and you are good to what go and then it goes on to tell us that 12 if if she targets a profit of twenty five thousand, can i see the per annum how much sales should she make per annum to achieve the target so now i realize that here we have everything is in per annum if the question have said that how much should she should what she make per monthly then you know that you're going to actually 
work out the target profit by 12, then phase cost also by 12, and then you are good to go so that you just have to apply them. So here, since the annum straight up, we are good to go. We say that our target profit, how much is so this target profit in terms of what value, right? So target profit in terms of sale or value will give us our fixed cost plus or the target profit divided by our contribution. And you know contribution selling price minus what? The variable cost per unit. And then multiply by the selling price. Okay. Straight up, we are good to go. So let's see what we have here. Okay. I want to just have some space. Okay. So straight up, we can say that our target profit in sales supposed to give us what our face cost was giving us 48 because here we are dealing with per annum information plus the target profit of what 25,000 okay divide or by what this selling price is 10 minus what 4.25 being the cost multiplied by what 100 you are multiplying all by 100 or it is all by 100 so whatever you get then we will define what your answer generally is. so throw in your answer in the chat for me so i'll see if you are right there so that is how you get what the target profit in terms of what the sale and then 13 saying that assuming assuming in a given month she targets to make a sale of what now you see the issue that i'm talking about here that assuming that in a given month she targets to make a sale of what eight thousand nine hundred what is her margin of safety for the month? She target to make what? A profit of what? Assuming a given month, she target to make a sale, sorry, a sale, rather, is a sale, rather. A sale of what? 8,900. What is her margin of safety for the month? So that means that here, we are able to work out for the break-even point in monthly. You can see from question 11, let me bring you there here. Monthly approach, I hope you can see that. We're asked to calculate how many tubers of yam. Oh, sorry about that. To sell in a month to break even. So once you have that, all I want to do in a monthly basis means that we are going to what? Subtract. Because we have what? That of what? She target to make a sale. Assuming the given month, she target to make a sale of what? 8,900. 8, what is her margin of safety? So here we have the sale in month as what? 8,000 what? 900 so what is will be the margin of safety for the month so that means that we are going to subtract what 696 from 8900 because we have been told that she targeted to make a sale of what 8900 that's a target right that is a target that is a target so how should you go that is that so it's what we said that margin of safety it is what the sales compare with the break-even point so you just have to compare the two whatever you get becomes your margin of safety in terms of what sales or value for the month and you are good to go so you realize that hey to pause wait you realize that what we calculated here for the break-even was in unit mm -hmm. it was in unit so what do we do we just have to multiply this by the selling price so that we then compare to what the 8900 my attention was done to that so that you don't make a mistake. If you don't compare the unit with the value, you must have equivalence. So by equivalence here means that you must what? Multiply what? 696, which is the unit by the selling price. There you then compare it what? The monthly sales so that you can get your margin of safety for the month. So let's take note of that, right? So let's take note of that. So that is how we go when it comes to the issue about break-even analysis being a single product so that is that now let's look out for the multiple issue then then we are done for today any other question for me we will have to go okay 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 mm -hmm. Let's see, some of you were throwing your answers in the chat for me. Let's see. Oh, what is this? 
kaven. Nyt saat sanoa kamenoa. Vai? Kamen, what is it? How about you saying that word? Your word? Your letter is word. Hey, this bro for the only you can know. Is it super word? <laughs> Before we go kill me. Then uh, Patrick is saying, okay, I get it now. That is fine. Ooh, then who again? So, okay. This was the answer that we were getting. I think, what was it question two or question three there? I said question 12 or question three. I think some Latin also here for OB files. And then I bet you also had similar thing. Yeah, okay, that is something like, I don't know how, but it seems the last ending values, you people are getting different things. But I think roughly they are the same because of approximation basis there. Then Patrick too. I think this one was, the last one okay i think so i think so i remember the answers so i think so yeah so that is that that is that all right that is that so let's 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 go to the last up the last part of our discussion which is a multiple break even analysis so we look out for the multiple and then we are off so multiple so let me say multiple analysis Oh, come on. Multiple analysis, multiple analysis, multiple analysis. So multiple analysis. Multiple analysis. Ooh. Multiple analysis. So when it comes to multiple analysis of break-even, multiple analysis of break-even, here the emphasis is on multi-product, the emphasis on multi-product. But one thing that makes multiple analysis so simple and straightforward is that multiple analysis are used for computation of what they are break-even with respect to what monetary values. That is all. Here we don't do with units. We compress all the units into values and then we find a single word break-even point for that and here it is on monetary word value so you find the break-even for the all the products in monetary terms how much are we making right to break even in terms of value that is a multiple break-even analysis issue that you really want to understand so let's take note of that so here straight up our formula is going to be what break-even point break-even point so, so if we were to be in cities, then in Ghana cities, it was something like this, or somebody would say that in cities like this, supposed to be what your face cost. Okay, as always, your face cost divided by is a denominator that have a lot of work, right? Divided by, so you have what your sigma, but you're gonna expand it, right? Sigma one minus x word v i over come in let me check the formula so that you know that we are on the right track a certain thing you just want to keep it sweet and simple so i think uh, i need to get my formula book uh, okay so it is what one minus what v i or one minus v i over p i is kind of okay multiply by what w i being the weight we will discuss all these things here so this is how it actually goes when it comes to the multiple break-even. The formula, this is how the formula is. Your first cost divided by the summation of what? One minus your variable cost divided by your selling price per unit multiplied by the weight. So the VI is what? The variable cost per unit. That is a variable cost per unit. More like what the cost per unit or variable cost per unit, something like that. And then the PI is the selling price per unit. And then the WI is the what? The weight that each product brings onto the uh with respect to their cost and then price the weight we will calculate that with respect to we calculate that so that you see how far we can go generally here seems my camera is off let me bring in a different one so that you can use that for my discussion 
So my camera was watching all day, so you just have to bring in a new one, a laptop camera, you just have to go. So that is the idea I was trying to present here with a multiple break I think I'm online. Okay, that's fine. Good. So now let's bring in, yeah, I'm just going to use a question straight up to explain these formulas so that you are good to go. So let me create in a scenario. Let's say we have AA limited, AA limited, AA limited has the following or inventory has the following has the following inventory has the following inventories so like say inventories as shown in a table below has the following inventories with their details of price I mean those ones with their details are shown in the table below as shown in the table below i like see what we have here so you just have two products i said two let's go for three i'm looking at this my right so let's go for three we have word x we have product yeah, products X, Y, and what Z. Okay. Then we have, let me bring it down like this. So these are the products. So product. Now let me bring in this. We have the product. We have the product, and then we have what? Yeah, selling price. I like to say the selling price per each product. Selling price per unit. Then variable cost per unit and the total quantity of output that they produce quantity quantity also being given there so selling price the selling price of x goes for 1.5 gonna say this now let me make it simple three let's say here is two let's say here is one and the cost here we have here to be 1.5 here we have here to be one you have here to be 0.5 per unit with respect to cost so here is in insert this per unit and the volumes of output the volumes that they produce i mean respect to the output x we produce were 2000 x we produce were 2000 okay then y we produce let's say 5000 and then let's say z to be produced what 7000 something like this so based on this data we are asked to word calculate the break multiple break even points from this data how do we go by that so you are going to start to build up a table to bring in this so within the table we are going to show uh these uh inscriptions here on the table so you have our multiple break even table generally here so let's see how we go about that I'm coming let me check up this uh, so you know that we are on call okay so let's go oh sorry about this all right so let's go so we have our table here we have first the product itself or the item we can call it the item okay so the item we have for item what item x y and z x y and what z okay then we have their selling price so i'm going to make it simple selling prices we have what three three two one and then their variable cost two we have what 1.5 1.5 1 we have one we have 0 0.5 so once you have this for the quantity we will bring that uh 
up later on when we get to certain tables. So once we have this, the next thing we want to produce is to what? Get into what we call our variable cost with respect to the price. We want to find the ratio of variable cost and then the price as per the formula here. We can that we need to find what something like this. You must find a column for something like this, right? Variable cost divided by what the price. We can find we need to find I mean a shadow like that. So we'll have that coming up here. So we'll have what our V divided by what P. So that means that we just have to divide what the we just have to divide the cost by their respective prices and we are good to what go right so let's do that just have to take your calculator bring it up here for you so what do we do here we have what the first one we have what 1.5 1.5 divided by what 1.5 divided by 3 we are getting what 0 0.5 so here we'll get what 0 point what 5 then we have here to be also uh let's see what we have here the next one is also what one divided by what two so you're going to get 0 0.5 the same 0 0.5 there these are just random figures i picked so whatever that will happen at the end of the day should be the conclusion but we just want to understand the principle behind how we compute for that okay so then you also do the same thing here we have what here to be what 0.5 divided by what one why are we getting all of them to 0 0.5 like that uh, just a coincidence it doesn't mean that you get everything to be 0 0.5 no these are just figures and by coincidence we are getting what 0 0.5 okay so once you have that that is fine the same formula also tell us that we need to have a column for what? one a column for one minus the vi over pi which we have computed here so that means you must have a column for this one too so we have what one minus what v over what p as also another column so that means that whatever we get as v over p we will subtract from one and we are good to what go so let's see how we go by that too okay this one i shouldn't i mean subtract with calculator but i can straight away subtract let's see so 0 0.5 from one i think oh, we are getting 0 0.5 generally there it's supposed not to be something like this but i don't i just pick the figures randomly right so here to get 0 0.5 0 0.5 like that okay so once you get that that is fine the next thing you want to do is that you see we have one minus you know we're multiplying the weight the weight is what we're going to calculate as the next thing so in respect to how to calculate the weight is very simple here is where we're going to introduce what we call our total what sales. Remember, as I we started with the introductory lecture, we said break-even analysis are actually a tool for making decisions. So business people use for making decisions, forecasting at the end of the day, right? Forecasting at the end of the day, right? So that is the issue here. I thought I'm looking at this, so but my camera is here. So forecasting at the end of the day, right? So we use break even to make decisions for future word forecast right of sales or the cost you want to incur or something like that so that means that we need to have what our sales what our predicted what sales output that you want to have so to get that you are going to have what we call sales what values sales value going to have so to get a sales value you are going to multiply what each quantity that we produce for each product by their respective for selling what price by their respective selling price so what do we do we just have to take three multiplying two thousand in that order so that we get the values there so we will have here to be what we will have here to be three multiplying to you are getting what six thousand there okay then three multiplying what two multiplying five thousand we are getting what we are getting ten thousand so this is going to be their sales value in, in value form like that i mean more like for it to be in city cities like that then we have what one more time seven. we are getting what seven thousand so after this the next thing you want to do is to find the totals for this okay so what are we getting for the totals oh totals so we have what 
here bring in my calculator small we have what six plus we have six plus ten plus what seven we are getting 23 so you're gonna have here as well 23,000 so once you have the 23,000 the next thing you want to do is that you are going to find the percentage weights of each product with respect to the total what, value of the sales so by the way it means that we are going to find a percentage of how much of our sales revenue we generate that is coming from the total of what, 23,000 per our calculation here that is the meaning of the weight how much of that particular say product x sales total sales that is that can be i mean obtained from the total sale of what 23,000 that is how we determine the weight so for x means you have what 6,000 right divided by 23,000 there and what do we get you get what 0 0.26 we are going to keep it straight and simple we're going to convert everything to roughly three decimal places okay so that we are good to go you can also multiply by 100 but let's keep the weight the nominal weight with respect to the sales value in the total like that okay so we will have that as let them put in as what as a decimal decimal weight of the sales so d of x represents the decimal weight of the sales individual sales so what are we getting we are getting here to be what 0 0.2 0 0.261 okay so come in check up there let's see if i'm online okay okay so let's continue so here too we have what seven divided by 23 oh, 23 i'm just getting rid of the three zero that's why i'm doing that okay so that i don't keep on repeating them so i have here to be zero point word three zero four so once i'm true with this now to get the actual weight okay all that i want to do right is to multiply the decimal weight of each of the cells by what one minus what v over p so we are going to multiply this follow carefully here we are going to multiply what uh how should i let me go by this we are going to multiply this these ones right uh, let me use this for we are going to multiply these values okay by these values so that we get the weight generally there this is how we compute for the weight generally so let's go straight up so we'll have what zero point two six one multiplying what 0.5 supposed to get what supposed to get 0 point what let's say 3 0 0.1 3 let's keep the four there's my places here i don't want to oh come on i'm coming or oh, even this space is not even let me do this bring it a bit closer so we get what 0 0.1305 okay and then we do same so i think we're getting all of them as 0.5 so uh, let's see for this one to 0 0.435 0 0.435 0 0.435 0 0.435 right multiplying what 0 0.5 we are getting what we are getting 0 0.2175 and then we have what lastly we have what 0 point 0 point 0.304 multiplying 0 point we are getting what 0 point what 0 0.152 
say 1520 like that. 20 like that. Okay. Something like this. So after that, based on the formula, we are looking out for the totals of these. The totals of these are variables. We are looking out for the weight and we are looking out for what? one minus what? V over P weight, right? The summation. The summation. We are looking out for that. So we will have for this one. Sum them up. We also sum this also up. And let's see what we will get at the end of the day. Okay, I think uh, uh, we have for the, yeah, something like that. Okay, I mean, something like that. We are good to go. So, let's see. Here, we're going to get what? I'm going to check up something here. I'm coming so that we know we are the right spot. No mesh and upper like that. Oh, do you know something? We are saying what? Yeah, yeah, I think based on the formula here, we are asked to find what the summation of what? 1 minus V multiplying what? VI. And I think we have done the multiplication generally there. Yeah. So I think this one shouldn't be this. Because the weight is actually what we have find as what? The VI here. So to get the summation of what? 1 minus V over P. 1 minus V over P multiplying WI is these ones. The last column. So actually, this when we multiply this and this, that's where we get what is below the formula here. So when you sum them up, generally, it's supposed to be this. Okay. So we are summing up with the last column up, and that will be eight for all. So let's see what we will get generally there. So we have what we will have. No point what one three zero five. Oh, I said zero point. Yeah, zero point one. 305 plus 0 0.2175 plus 0 0.152. You are getting 0 0.5. I think you are getting 0 0.5. It's just a coincidence. Not necessarily that we're going to get 0 0.5. So take note of that. So you're going to get what? 0 0.5 as that. So that means that at the end of the day, to get or find our break even points in cd for multiple break even we will say that our break even point in cd spare the formula should be equal to what we have the formula here as the first cost divided by or the summation of the multiplication of one minus v i divided by pi multiplied by the weight and this is the weight that we calculated as the decimal weight of what the sales so the first cost were we given a face cost? Oh no, so let me add in the face. So let's say NB, our face cost was given us what? Face cost, we're having face cost of what? 30,000. 30,000, that's our face cost, okay, per annum. So that means that therefore, our multiple break even in terms of cities should be what? 30,000. Okay, let me bring in that 30,000 divided by. 0 0.5 so what do we get we will have here to be called word so 30 30 divided by 0 0.5 we are getting so more like we are getting what 60,000 ish there and that is how we compute for multiple break even analysis they are used to just to find a break even for monetary word values alone. So that becomes a limitation. Because realize that the single product we deal with what both word value and then in monetary value. But when it comes to multiple products, we are just dealing with just the value part in absence of the unit in computation general day. So let's take note of that. And that will bring us to the end of break even analysis with respect to single product and with respect to that of the multiple product any question for me okay patrick is saying that what oh 
think I've seen some chart here. Let me bring it up. So I flow. It's saying that, please, shouldn't the weighted contribution column be in? Here, it is always going to be given by the examiner per the description. It's not that it should be a fixed per, uh, decimal place, no. The examiner will direct you as to how to go by the approximation. But here I was working them in three decimal places generally there. doesn't mean that it is three decimal places to every question, no. It was specific to me, so I made it three decimal places there. So always pay attention to that take somebody is the dictate of what the question general or the details of the question and that will guide you as how well to go about it but all i wanted to explore is what, how we go by the computation of what the multiple break-even analysis how we go through the process to get the monetary value of that so that should be the goal actually this shouldn't be a goal or to worry you at all so that is that any other question for me if there are no other questions then it will be a pleasure for me to end here so thank you so much for watching this live session please do want to give us a like if you haven't subscribed subscribe to the channel and then share with your friends who may also be interested in this kind of presentation to help them as always so i'll catch you up in our next section and then i'll see you next time bye bye